Hello everyone, this is Daniel from Tabula Tech and OldRC.com and today instead of old RC stuff, this is old Apple technology. Uh, I don't know about the rest of you, but I know what I was doing on May 2nd, 2003, 20 years ago. I was traveling at some point up to the Twin Cities from Rochester, Minnesota with a colleague and friend of mine to go purchase the iPod third generation from the Apple store at the Mall of America. That was the only Apple store in the Twin Cities at the time. So we were up there on the release day for the iPod Touch third generation. Like a lot of things on Wikipedia, it says the release date was like April something, which may have been the announcement by Steve Jobs for it, but it is incorrect. The release date for it was May 2nd. 2003 how do i know that for sure well i've got the t-shirt to prove it for one got it there i got the sticker sheet that proves it there you go i've got the poster that proves it framed my pride and joy i have hanging in the house see it like every day so yeah i, I i've got lots of evidence that it, uh, that is the the day that it was released, contrary to what Wikipedia might say. Uh, they might be a little bit a bit of idiots, unfortunately. But yeah, if you went to that on release day, you could get a t-shirt. I don't remember if we had to pay for this or not. I was actually talking to my buddy just a little bit before I shot this video, seeing if he remember what he was doing. And he says he still got his t-shirt, though he says I wear mine better. I, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know if he has his iPod still or not. I, I have a feeling he didn't say anything that he had it when I showed him some pictures of my setup here that I was getting ready to do for the video. So I have a feeling he doesn't have his anymore. But you also could get the stickers here then as well, which I think I had two sets of these. I remember having a set stuck on my cubicle wall at work for many years, uh, but I still have this original set. They're getting a little, little bit worn out, but uh, yeah, I, I don't think too many people have this around anymore. This is probably pretty rare. The poster is not too terribly hard to find, but uh, uh, the stickers are a little bit hard to find and a product brochure. So what did the iPod third generation feature? What was the cool features of it? Well, battery life was eight hours. Skip protection up to 25 minutes. Now, if you remember the old CDs had like three second, 10 second skip protection on a lot of the Sonys and stuff like the Philips, I think, and everything we're bragging about that. A two inch diagonal grayscale LCD screen that was backlit. That was really cool with this, having the backlit screen. Then you had the 30 pin doctic connector. We're gonna get into that some more. That was a pretty cool thing for its time. The remote connector came with this one and then the stereo mini jack. And then uh, you had three hours to charge it up to full one hour for like 80%. There is way back 2003 AAC support in 16 to 320 kilobytes. Then you, of course you had MP3 and MP3 variable bit rate and AIFF and wave and stuff like that and audible. But on the PC side, apparently back then there was only MP3 MP3 variable bitrate and wave. That was it. No audible or AIFF files at all on this. And they talk about size here on this. The 30 gigabyte one was apparently a little bit thicker than the 10 and the 15 gigabyte model. Mine is the 15 gigabyte model, um, middle of the road. And I thought the 15 gigabyte was the only one that came with the remote connector and dock, but maybe I'm wrong on here. It doesn't say that, but I thought that's what what it was back in the day, but I, I, like I said, I might be wrong. The 15 and the 30 have the dock, the case, and the remote included. You can get these ex as accessories for the 10 if you want. And 299 for the 10, 399 for the 15, and 499 for the 20. And then, uh, yeah, you've got uh, the uh, bunch of other accessories. We'll show some of them here. Some of them I still have the accessories, and I've got them here in the box. Others. I know I have them, but they're in some other separate box somewhere, and I don't know where they're at. And I, unfortunately, don't want to take the time to search through anything. That's a video for another day, which I might do someday, is going through all the old junk I have from 17 years at Mayo and years before that working for sales service stuff in uh, Mac Wizards in Orlando. And just before that, when I was in school, after high school, I had my first Mac. So, yeah, we'll, we'll go over this then. Uh, this brochure... Had the, you know, the picture of the iPod, 
and unfolds out with more exciting people on it showing how cool they are with their iPod third generation. And then it's screenshots on it, of course, of different things. Oh yeah, this, I forgot completely forgot about how you could do the star rating right there on the song as you were playing it. I had, there, it's hard to see probably on video on this, but I, there's a little Balkan battery pack you could do some double A's and like four double A's to like charge up stuff and keep it going on the go. I had that. I don't know what happened to that. My dad must have lost that one. <laughs> I don't remember seeing it since I got it back, this back from, because my after I moved on to the iPod Touch, I believe, uh, I gave this to my father, and then after a few years, I got it back from him and everything. They had the Brickout game. Later, they had the Trivia game, I think, on there for music and something else. I forget what else there was. There was some other some other game on there, I think, that came out. But that came out in later versions of the operating system for the iPod, not, this, not at launch. That didn't come with it. And two more new games, Solitaire and Parachute. <laughs> Maybe the most important new feature of all. And right now, my iPod is pretty much dead. Uh, a few years ago, I changed the battery out of it, uh, but the hard drive died a short time later after that, and I haven't got that replaced yet. I'm going to replace it eventually with a solid state uh, kind of adapter, a, a compact flash to the little type of spinning hard drive that came with it originally. So I won't be able to show you what the screen looks like today because it gets stuck in an endless boot cycle until the battery dies if I try and use it at this point. So you slide off the, the outer sleeve, and I believe, too, this probably has more accessories and everything that could come with it than anything Apple ever did after this. I, don't, I think they, just like with the, you know, some of the original iPhones, as time goes on, they skimped on a lot of accessories and everything. And I think this was the, basically the high point for accessories you got with any of the uh, portable Apple products. Uh, I don't think anything matches this. So, yeah, uh, I should mention too, uh, on, had a little sticker on there that you would open it up. This box is getting a little beat up here. Uh, oh, also, th this had a sticker on the back that mentions USB 2 was introduced, support was introduced with this, not just FireWire, but it says a warning on here, USB 2 support coming soon. It didn't make it for launch. And then eventually they were gonna have their USB 2.0 cable availability. And that was a big deal because this still needed FireWire to charge. You cannot do USB to charge it. Uh, that wasn't until later versions where they supported uh, USB for charging. Power requirement was just too much. So you would open it up and you get your iPod on one side and some of your accessories and instruction booklet and CD on the other side. And so in here, enjoy, it says. Then you've got your instructions. I think this probably came with stickers, but those are long gone. A CD and I think like a quick start, yeah, quick reference and some warranty stuff. But the stickers are probably in my collection of stickers. I have a huge pile of stickers from various eras of Apple stuff that are just the Apple logo in different sizes. Rainbow ones, white ones, now even silver ones. Uh, inside also you got the dot connector I mentioned. That uh, You get that. Later versions of the dock would have an infrared port on it and then different covers that went over it for different versions of iPod you had because they were different thicknesses for them. This had the 30 pin on the back. It had a line out on it, which was really nice. This was a good kind of start towards um, a dock. Uh, it had one lacking feature and I'll kind of get into that a little more detail how I kind of made up for what I didn't like about it uh, later on with accessories from a third party. Then you, you had a bag. You had a nice bag that came with it to put your iPod in. I don't think I ever used that. Then how many of you remember, you got the, the old style headphones, but they actually came with foam covers that went on them. And I apparently only used ever used one set of them and my dad never used any with it uh, after I gave it to him. So there's some original set in the little sealed pouch, probably rotten away at this point. That's getting pretty old at this point. Um, oh, this shouldn't be in here. That doesn't come with it. Then there's the remote for it. It mentions that in the box. This is a very handy thing. I'll get into that a little bit more here in a moment. 30 pin dust cover thing that keep the dust and dirt out of the 30 pin connector on it. 
mentions this on the box too. I don't know how many can tell what this is right away, but this is the standard Firewire port to the little mini Firewire port that you had found uh, you, that you found on most PCs at the time. In fact, at that time, I think the only thing you usually ever came with Firewire was the Sony VIOS. Well, some of the higher end Sony VIOS came with Firewire like this for hooking up to Sony cameras. So this would allow you to plug this into like say your Sony or uh, if you did buy a, a PCI Firewire card, I suppose you could do that. But I think even then most of the Firewire cards that were optional for PCs had the standard Firewire one. But yeah, if you had a Sony, you were lucky enough to have a Sony that had Firewire. This would help you get it connected to your iPod. So that takes, more, takes care of most of the adapters that I still can find right now and accessories that came with it. There should have been over on this side the um, wall wart six pin firewire cable thing uh, and then this cable should have been there in there as well but it's it's getting nasty it's an original apple one its stuff has turned sticky and it's attracted all sorts of stuff on it it has seen much better days but this is the original 30 pin to firewire cable that came with it so the ipod was wrapped in the this is wrapped in its original plastic here that says do not steal music because that was a big deal back then Everybody was worried that everybody was just going to start stealing music with MP3s and everything. Um, and then on the back it says, uh, to turn on, press any key, backlight, press and hold the menu. Because this was a backlit screen, which was really cool for its time. Off, press and hold the pause button on there. To reset, in case it crashed, was having problems, you would do the pause and the menu button at the same time. And then later, there was something too, I think, with the center wheel... And one of the buttons to do something, I forget, to get into sort of maybe a utility menu. I forget. I, I think I've been in that once here recently when I was trying to troubleshoot the hard drive that had finally died in it. So let's peel out a little bit more here. So that dust cover, of course, would go in the bottom to protect the 30 pin. Um, these were all touch sensitive buttons, which was totally new. Before that, you had, on the first gen, you had the click mechanical wheel. On the second gen, you had a touch wheel, but you still had the buttons around the outside. This one put the buttons across the top, and I believe this was the only one that ever did the buttons across the top. And after this, they went away from it. It was not really the greatest design. I hated kind of fumbling for it when I didn't have my nice remote to use with it, trying to find the pause button on there and not accidentally hit either the fast forward or the menu button because they were fairly sensitive buttons. On the top, you have the hold button so that none of the key presses do anything. The remote would still work, but the buttons on the front and the wheel would not do anything if you had the hold button engaged. And so you have your standard headphone jack there and then a little side part that allows a bunch of nifty kind of features for this. So with the remote, you could plug that in at the top. And now that would give you the ability to then plug in your headphone cables. And there was a, a separate hold button for these right here on the side of it this is a really cool thing I, I really like this i would wear this on the bus clipped to my tie because i had to wear a tie working at mayo and you had to take the bus because downtown parking was terrible and uh yeah took this on the bus everywhere i went there you know had it listening to my music was great that was awesome but then people came out with something like this and this is when the dock became more useful to me you plug this in and then you had the remote this is a remote control and the remote control you could then I would plug this into my stereo and I could control it from a fairly good distance in the room I don't think this had the best IR signal but it, it wasn't too bad and uh, yeah now I could remotely control it later on the dock would do that for you but not in this version you could not do that this version of the dock and I don't remember if the later version of the dock actually worked with this model or not uh, to do the infrared I think it did so let's go over some other stuff too uh, one of the things they had for the top was a microphone this uh, my dad had this at some point I did not have this I didn't have a need for it but it would record audio files into your iPod that then you could sync later on to your computer and that's one thing I should bring up too here with this next adapter is syncing to your computer this is a 30 pin, uh, it would plug in the bottom, then your firewire cable, a standard firewire cable could plug right into the bottom. You didn't need to find the Apple 30 pin thing here. You could have this small little thing 
in your pocket or your bag. And then if you had your firewire cable, you know, wherever you were going, you could just use a standard firewire cable. You didn't need to have the Apple special firewire cable. And that's something that was really awesome about early iPods and well, I guess either later iPods until they got to the iPod touch and the iPhone, they got rid of it was that this was not just your music player. This was an external hard drive that you could use to move large amounts of data between computers. I would use this to move data from uh, my computer at home and take it to work with me at Mayo, um, use it to swap stuff onto people's computers at work even sometimes I did that, uh, helping them get files off a computer I did one time I think, or one or two times probably. Uh, it was really great. It was a really great thing. So then any standard firewire cable you had, you could just, with your little plug here, you could do that and get the files off. I wish later models, I mean, how many years was it until they had the file capability on the iPhones and the iPod touches to be able to transfer files? This had it way back in, well, the very first iPod actually had it. So it's very, it was very disappointing when the uh, later iOS came out and you couldn't do the nice little file transfer, put this in a uh, disk mode and move files back and forth. Oh, forgot, almost forgot. These are the, the original headphones here. I, I guess I didn't have those in the box either. Nothing really special. These have seen far better days. They're not, they, they are not really usable anymore. They, they are shot. Uh, this came with a little case sort of thing too. That's in a box somewhere. I still have it. I don't know where it's at, but this was a, a, a case that I had at one point and gave to my father. It was a real nice one for it. Nothing too fancy about it. You could still use the dock connector, but if I remember correctly, sometimes it was a little bit of a pain to get through the, the extra space needed with the uh, leather there. So this is the 20th anniversary of this iPod third generation, but it's also the 20th anniversary of what we've been talking about a lot, quite a bit here, and that is the 30 pin connector. This brought on the 30 pin connector that allowed you to plug your iPod into a whole bunch of stuff. And now you find a whole lot of that stuff in landfills and at thrift stores everywhere and garage sales. And that's the iHome alarm clock radios, the Sony ones, the little docks that would go under your kitchen cabinets when you're working in the kitchen, your car adapters. I still have this one. This one, I've made this work all the way up until my iPhone 6. I haven't used it in a while because everything's in my cars now. has got stuff where I don't need it. But if I rent a, a cargo van, I used to rent a cargo van for... Uh, hauling pinball machines and I would use this when I was on the road uh, for this with this so later iPods got color screens they had video capabilities this is a 30 pin that allowed you to get component video the RGB plus the audio into your television plug this into like a, the dock or the uh, straight into your iPhone or iPod and then just get video capability playbacks into your television. This one here, this road adapter, you had to slide in different um, adapters to make it work with the different depths and stuff of your different iPhones and iPods that had come out up until this point. This also had a line out on the bottom, had audio up and down, or no, not audio up and down, uh, tuning up and down for radio station this was an fm transmitter on this one later docks also had different sleeves that went over the docks for the different thicknesses of the ipods it was quite a whole accessory thing they had back in the day and like i mentioned this thing had 30 pin but you had a knob on the back that would uh, adjust the depth of this to hold the thing upright and this also had video capabilities on it to go out to a television and it has a remote control somewhere and a power thing i need to get rid of this at this point but i still have it and why do i still have it because for a while after apple retired the 30 pin you could get it from them adapters would go 30 pin to lightning like that one or this one here and for a few years after apple discontinued these these went for good bucks on ebay uh, brand new old inventory these were worth a lot because you could find third parties that made stuff similar to this but they didn't have the little microchip inside that allowed this things your your lightning phones and stuff like that that had that port to work with them all it would do is provide power which was pretty much a waste then didn't really need it for just power for most people 
So these, uh, I don't know what these prices are currently going for eBay. They're probably not as much demand for them as there used to be. Uh, because like I said, most of the people have finally given up on their 30 pin stuff and put them into the uh, dump or electronic recycling, hopefully. But, uh, and you'll go to any thrift store now, and I guarantee you, you'll go in and you'll find at least one thing sitting on the shelf that takes a 30 pin connector. It's no doubt. There's either a cable sitting on the shelf from somebody's old iPod or there's one of these sort of alarm clock radios that's got that 30 pin in it. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this little trip down memory lane in the uh, old iPod third generation. I have so much old stuff, I probably should get rid of it. And that's before I get rid of it though, I'll probably do a video on it and get rid of it. I don't know if I'm gonna get rid of this, but you know, it's not sealed, but you know, if, you, if you're Marquis Brownlee who had the, bought the third first generation iPhone, you know, and you want to buy this from me for, you know, 40,000 or whatever. <laughs> I'll gladly take that offer. I will sell it to you. I've got such rare items here that most people don't have. I mean, the sealed headphone foamy things, those are worth probably five grand right there alone. <laughs> But anyway, have a great day, and thanks for watching. Bye-bye. They're going to be available this Friday across the U.S. Our whole channel is having some events this Friday, and there are going to be a large supply of them this Friday. And they will be available one week later internationally, May 9th. So, the new iPod, clearly the best way now to listen to music.